In this video, we're going to look at calculating concentration of solutions. Concentration will be measured by a unit called molarity. Moles of solute per liter of solution. The solute is what we're trying to dissolve, and then the volume of the solution is measured in liters. Now we do measure concentration by moles of solvent, amount of particles, not by mass. So for example, this first question gives us a sodium chloride solution. Well, I could have a sodium chloride solution with the same concentration as maybe a rubidium chloride solution. And I know that rubidium is a much heavier element than sodium, but I just want the same number of particles in order to get the same concentration. This is not a measure of mass of solution. So when I see something like number one, and they're asking me to calculate the molarity of a sodium chloride solution that contains 125 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 500 milliliters of solution, right away I know that I have to get that 125 grams into moles. Step one, take that 125 gram sample. This is sodium chloride. Cancel grams, we need moles. One mole has the mass on my periodic table. I just need to add sodium plus a chlorine for about 58.44 grams total. We can plug this in our calculator. We'll divide 125 divided by 58.44. For about 2.14 moles. The 125 had three sig figs, so I'll leave three sig figs with my moles. Perfect. Now, this is pretty typical that if I'm making a solution in the lab, I would have measured my solute on the electronic balance using grams. But now when I calculate the concentration, it is moles of solute per liter of solution. So I want this concentration molarity as the 2.14 moles. But now I need to fix that volume. The volume here was given in milliliters, and I will need to switch that one, two, three. I need to put that back in liters. So we'd be looking at about 0.5 liters. A liter is a thousand milliliters, so I guess that makes sense. 500 milliliters is half a liter. And now we got it. We can just divide and I uh, get about, what, 4.28 molar. We'd say we have a 4.28 molar solution of sodium chloride. But again, that's a really typical calculation. We're going to measure our mass in grams, and we don't always make a full liter of solution. And so if I make a fraction of a liter, like 100 milliliters, 500 milliliters, we do need to switch it to liters when we do our molarity calculation. Perfect. I like that. We're going to dominate. The second one, here's another way to spin this equation. Instead of solving for the concentration in molarity, we could solve for either moles or we could solve for volume. Number two says what volume of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid would be needed to completely react with 50 grams of zinc metal? All right, so I'm looking for an amount of hydrochloric acid, HCl, that would be needed to completely react with 50 grams of zinc metal. Okay, so with this being like a chemical reaction, it really smells of stoichiometry, doesn't it? Oh, I just smell the stoichiometry. Uh, in order to do stoichiometry, I need a balanced equation. I need to know the ratio by which hydrochloric acid reacts with zinc metal. So here we go. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. It's reacting with zinc. Zn. Two rules of a single replacement 
Number one, the single element will switch with a like charged ion in the compound. So typically hydrogen is a plus one. Chlorine is a minus one. And now with zinc being a transition metal, somebody should probably tell us the charge. So what if I tell you that zinc is almost always plus two? If this were a test or a quiz or a lab, we would be told that. So that now I know zinc is positive and would like to switch with the other positive ion. Zinc for hydrogen. Now technically rule number two is that we were supposed to look at that reactivity series to make sure that zinc was more reactive than hydrogen. But I'll tell you, I mean, from here on out, all of these single replacements or double replacements they will work. We're not going to have some example reaction that doesn't work and then have them ask us to calculate something. And then at the end, you're like, hey, sucker, this doesn't even work. So, now, they'll all work from here on out. So I'll confirm that zinc is more reactive than hydrogen. And in fact, we've run this reaction a few times. That you get those bubbles of flammable hydrogen. It's a great reaction. Okay, so we can switch zinc and hydrogen. Zinc will come in with chlorine. Whenever I make a new combination, I have to check the charges. Zinc was a plus two, chlorine a minus one. To make that neutral, I need two chlorine. And then if zinc's coming in, hydrogen's moving out. Hydrogen will become the new single element and it is a diatomic single element. From there I balance, and this is a piece of cake. Two chlorine, two hydrogen, two HCl, I got it. Now for the stoichiometry. All right, so I have a certain amount of zinc, and I want to know in the end how much HCl do I need? Okay, so let's do a little stoichiometry. That two to one ratio is really the key to comparing how zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid, but it is not a ratio of grams. It's a ratio of moles. So I need to take that 50 grams of zinc, cancel grams of zinc, and get it into moles. One mole has the mass in my periodic table. Zinc, zinc, zinc. 65.39 grams, and that's a one. Grams for one mole. All right, zinc and zinc. I'm in moles. Which now technically, if, if this were back in the stoichiometry unit, once I have moles of zinc, I can use that two to one ratio to figure out how many moles of HCl I need. We can just tack on another proportion where I cancel moles of what I have and I switch it over to moles of what I want, HCl. We plug in the 2 to 1 ratio from the balanced equation. And now when I plug this in my calculator, I'll get how many moles of zinc I need. And now back in the stoichiometry world, sometimes we just left it as moles. Sometimes we went to grams, but now here this HCl, it's a solution. And in reality, if I'm measuring an amount of solution in the lab, a liquid solution is probably measured by its volume in milliliters. I'm going to pour it in a graduated cylinder. How many milliliters or liters do I need? And so right now, if I go 50 divided by 65.39, times two, I'm looking at about, oh gosh, figures. Uh, ew. Uh, I'm gonna leave three. I don't know if that 50 grams is supposed to be exact or if it's an estimate. I'm gonna go three, just for fun. All right, 1.53 moles of HCl. Now that we have moles of HCl, we can look at the problem and they give us the concentration. They tell me that it's a 0.5 molar 
HCL solution. Molarity is a measure of moles per liter or volume. And so I can take that 0.5 molar HCL and then say, well, I know how many moles I need. I want 1.53 moles of HCL and then leave volume as your variable, which it's going to come out in liters. And, and if it ends up being small, then maybe I would really measure it in milliliters in the lab. I can't tell you how often people have total brain farts when trying to solve for the denominator now. Okay, so remember your algebra. I'm going to cross multiply so that really, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like 1 times 1.53 equals 0 0.5 times liters. And now I'm going to divide each side by 0.5. Divide by the 0.5. But gosh, and maybe it's just that it's not something that you use every day. But sometimes you just turn into total boneheads trying to solve for a variable in the denominator. Algebra. Okay, let's plug this in. Uh, da -da -da -da. Volume, it's going to be in liters. I'm getting about 3.06 liters. And that would be volume of the hydrochloric acid, the HCl. There it is. I mean, 50 grams is kind of a lot of zinc. We would have never used 50 grams of zinc in the lab. But if I did, I would need about 3 liters of 0.5 molar HCl in order to completely convert that zinc into zinc chloride and hydrogen bubbles. Now, if I wanted the reaction to go faster, maybe I would use a more concentrated version of the HCl. If I used a more concentrated HCl, not, not only would the reaction just go faster, if I used one molar HCl instead of 0.5 molar, but I could also use less volume. And that's one of the things that we'll eventually kind of look at too, that, that concentration can affect the rate of a reaction. And there you have it. So we can use this unit M for molarity to not only calculate the concentration, but we can also calculate any of the other variables. We could solve for moles of solute, or like in this example, we could solve for the volume needed for this chemical reaction.